Welcome to the Delaware Beach region, an area that contains historic port towns and the oldest city in the state. Lewis was first settled by the Dutch in 1631, a coastal city along the edges of the Delaware Bay, which runs into the Atlantic Ocean, comprising of a fascinating history with architecture that dates back to the town's original settlement. I'm Jose, and I'm traveling across Delaware's Cape region, ready to explore the beach towns of the first state. On this tour, we'll learn about the European settlements, their conflicts, and the larger roles these explorers played in developing Delaware's first city. We'll explore some of Delaware's beach towns, beaches that contain that beautiful outdoor scenery we've come to appreciate in the first state. We'll also discover the remains of World War II artifacts, pieces of history that were left behind in one of Delaware's most unique geographical regions. So let's go on tour to the city of Lewis and the beaches of Delaware. The small town of Lewis, Delaware, a city with a population of only a couple thousand residents. Lewis was a trading post for the Dutch, then becoming a part of William Penn's charter when he acquired Pennsylvania and Delaware from King Charles. Lewis is in a unique position for Delaware as a city in Sussex County that's closest to the Atlantic Ocean, an advantage for tourism and trade. But it's also a risk when it comes to warfare. In the War of 1812, Many coastal cities, including Delaware City, cover their major water systems from ongoing attacks from the British. In the case of Lewis, Royal Navy vessels bombarded the town. A cannonball was still lodged at the Maritime Museum, keeping memory of the scars the city faced during America's famous battles. The city's nautical history has been a major component in creating its identity. Let's kick off the summer road trip, where they stop at the first of Delaware's beaches. Welcome to the great beach towns of America, where families are enjoying their summer getaway and the waves of the Atlantic Ocean blend with the Delaware Bay. These noises create the ambient soundtrack to summer and a perfect place to enjoy a game of volleyball. And the beach at Lewis looks like a continuous arc with the ferry seen at a distance. Lewis Beach is located at the end point of the Delaware Bay before it flows into the Atlantic Ocean. It's a beautiful day to go to the beach. Visitors to the resort town fill each corner of the beach with umbrellas and beach chairs, escaping the high temperatures that come with summer climate. Lewis Beach was home to the ancient ones, the big Sicanese from Algonquin Native American tribes. They would be the keepers of the land, who would settle disputes between other tribes. But as the tidal winds rise, we hold on to our umbrellas and head to the Roosevelt Inlet to watch the fishermen try and get a catch from the numerous species spread throughout the bay. Right next to the beach, we find ourselves at the ferry. Lewis is a city that sits on the Delaware Bay on the other side of Cape May, New Jersey. The ferry is a 17 mile route across the Delaware River at the very end where the river flows to the Atlantic Ocean. This is the famed Cape May Lewis Ferry, a tale of two states where New Jersey meets Delaware. As we await the ferry by the terminal, the crowds fill up the restaurants and bars, taking in the fantastic views from the pier. I walk along the planks of the terminal, observing its beauty and looking around at the lighthouses that are seen in the distance. 
the terminal contains several coin-operated binoculars to fully capture the scenic surroundings. And I approach a looking glass pointing to Cape Henlo Pen, the mysterious region next to Lewis. Here, we see the Breakwater East End Lighthouse, one of the oldest lighthouses in the state. On the other end, we vaguely see the sand dunes of Cape Henlo Pen, some of the biggest sand dunes on the East Coast. The planning to the Cape May Lewis Ferry began in the 1920s, originally meant to transport passengers on World War I military ships. The plans were abandoned until the 1960s when the Delaware River and Bay Authority were created. It began its first commercial commute in July of 1964, and since then, the terminal has onboarded more than 17 million vehicles and 45 million passengers, operating ferries that are larger than a football field. This is amazing, it's a mini replica of the actual ferry. The details look fantastic. From the skies, we see the next ferry being loaded. A ferry that holds up to 100 vehicles and 800 passengers per day, sailing to Cape May on an 85 minute excursion across the bay. journey from one maritime attraction to another at the Lewis Marina and Overfall ship. This boat is called the U.S. Overfalls. It was one of the last ships to the former U.S. Lighthouse Service before being integrated into the United States Coast Guard. The lightship Overfalls has been on display in the Lewis Marina since 1973. It was decommissioned and preserved for the general public. This beauty of a ship is a 114-foot wide vessel that was manned by 14 crew members. At the top of the ship, we can see the cabin and the ship's delicate features as crew members engage the visitors with its backstory. The Overfalls was essentially a mobile lighthouse whose purpose was to warn incoming ships of hazards. Outfitted with a 30-foot mast, it would transmit a powerful beam of light, helping navigate vessels struggling at sea. Lewis contains numerous attractions throughout the city that gives it that historical appeal, but at the same time generates its own unique persona. And I think what makes this adventure even more fascinating is just how different each one of these beach towns are. Taking a last glimpse at the boats traveling in the marina, we plan out our journey to head back into town. to do as a tour America is stop for pizza. So Delaware, Lewis, I'm excited to try your mix. My love for pizza, it's what fuels me through these adventures. A connoisseur of the delightful aroma and tasty ingredients. It's become my favorite food when traveling. Let's explore the historic streets of Lewis, beginning with the marker dedicated to those first European settlers. Delaware wasn't officially settled until New Sweden was established in the areas of Newcastle. 
Lewis is a resort town and one-fifth of Delaware's big beach region, so all the quaint beach town elements are found throughout its streets, like this beautiful classic car, giving off those summer vibes. I wander around the town, admiring the local shops only found in beach towns. Each one of the Delaware beaches are quite different when it comes to their environment, with a quiet, more relaxed atmosphere in Lewis, to the more upbeat town of Rehoboth only eight miles away. And the historic shops are the perfect addition to this giant adventure, where the crowds enjoy a peaceful scenic district filled with restaurants and shopping. And the voices heard from restaurants are the calm sounds of visitors after a tiring day at the beach. In the middle of the district is a clock marking the establishment of Lewis and the title of the first town in the first state. As I walk the streets, I feel so excited about my journey through Delaware, America's first state contains so much to experience, while simultaneously being one of the smallest with such an extensive history since becoming the first state. Being that Lewis is the first town in Delaware, you'll come across all these historic homes scattered throughout the city. This is the Lewis Chamber of Commerce, but more than that, it's a home that was built in the 1700s, a perfect reflection of the architecture from its time. The first town of modern Delaware, where European settlement traces back to the 1600s with explorer Henry Hudson. The Lenape Native Americans inhabited these lands prior to European activity and originally set up trade between the two people. The story between the two nations becomes tragic, with different accounts of what stemmed from a Dutch and Lenape dispute. But the Dutch were driven away in this first attempt at settling Delaware, while the Lenape's population took a major downfall from the diseases brought over from Europe. Smallpox was a major impact to life expectancy, with over 400,000 Europeans dying from the disease during the 1600s, at a time when the planet's population was barely a fraction of what it is today. In this historic town, we have a museum dedicated to recounting the forgotten stories contained within the borders of Delaware. The Swanendale Museum was constructed to honor the 300th anniversary of the first European settlers. It was modeled after the city hall in the town of Horn, Netherlands. The museum contains historic images and stories from all across the Cape region. This museum was named after the original name given to the town, Swanendale, or Swan Valley in Dutch, containing 17th century architecture like terracotta roof tiles, carved stonework, and decorated shutters. Atop the museum is a statue of David Peterson de Vries, leader of the expedition who founded Swanendale. As we step inside the museum, we see a statue dedicated to Horn and the stories of the courageous sailors who traveled along the Chesapeake and Delaware Bay. This place is filled with so much history, it's so fascinating. On the second floor, I mean, we have lighthouses, we have a bigger expansion to the story of Lewis. The areas of Lewis and Cape Henlopen Penn started the foundation of Delaware, and these exhibits show the different lighthouses that are found throughout the beach region, demonstrating the importance of the area.
the town's maritime tradition dates back hundreds of years, acting as a seafaring port town along the coast of the Delaware Bay and Atlantic Ocean. Without going unnoticed, the final piece to this town's history is within the houses, where neighborhoods have seen the full story of Lewis and Cape Henlopen. The Cannonball House is a perfect monument when it comes to telling the story of Lewis. Built in the 1700s, the house contains scars of the famous War of 1812, where the British bombarded the town of Lewis, and a cannonball was lodged in the concrete of the house. Across the Swanendale Museum is the mansion of David Hall, a patriot during the Revolutionary War who would go on to become one of the early governors of Delaware. The house still contains a lot of its components from when it was first constructed in the 1700s. And our final stop is the Historical Society, where it preserves some of the oldest homes in Lewis. Aptly called the Sharp Carpenter Campus, these homes all tell a piece of Lewis's history. As we walk along the houses, we see the different architecture from numerous periods of Lewis and the echoes of struggles that Southern Delaware residents faced. A fascinating journey through time as we experience one of the most riveting beach resort towns in America and the perfect place to begin a tour of the beaches of Delaware. It's time for school. <laughs> the city of Lewis contains pieces of all of Delaware to develop its own narrative as the first settled territory, it's seen the birth of a state, from the historic streets to its breathtaking ferry, playful beaches, and ship dock. Lewis gives you everything when searching for a summer escape, and the perfect entry point when exploring the beach towns of Delaware. I'm Jose, and I thank you for coming along on this tour of the city of Lewis as we explore the beach towns of Delaware. If you like what you've seen today, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and share. If you want to see more on the beaches of Delaware, please stay tuned for the following video. Until next time.